is Nibutani. This is the bus stop. Tradition. Modernity. Connectivity. The museum and the lake a part of the larger Nibutani Kotan area. So the layout of the different Sise houses, the museum is here. Some of the pictures shots across the lake here, but the lake the water level is low at the moment, so you can see that it's not a single lake, but it's down to the halves of a river. So it's the trees which provide the wood and also the fabric. provides seating area for people. The elevated storehouse. The watersheds, different exhibition areas making handicrafts and keeping the spirit and tradition alive. This is Nibutani Ainu Museum. Many outside displays and then they have an internal display Botany Ainu Cultural Museum. They have a timeline of the recorded history. And this is the Nibutani Museum is in the this river basin. About two hours drive south of Sapporo. They make many crafts out of bark of trees. There are trees everywhere. And they harvest in June the bark and they boil it for a couple of days. And they thread it. And then they make the bark into a weaving. And the weaver wears it around her waist and weaves cloth made of the bark. Very many tools. Many products in the museum made of wood. Of wood carving and they have different uh, symbols for keeping away evil spirits, talisman. They have it pronounced also in Aino language and Japanese. of a woodworking tools.
Oh, it's made of wood. The houses, the models here, the real ones are outside. Salmon is an important livestock source of protein. We share this with some of the northeastern American tribes. This is blessings. In front of the canoes, we also put these for blessing. This is a large tree that's been carved, a single piece. These are various types of dried foods that are used to store in a long winter. You have four or five months of snow. And these shoes are made of salmon skin. Salmon skin shoes. It's a bird trap. Arrows. It's a quiver case. Keeping the arrows. Any bows. Fixed arrows. This is the grain. on displays for people. This is a fish or eel trap. Some similarity with the culture we can see in different places. Some necklaces. Carvings of horses, deer and animals. Videos. Music. Swords. The owl, the bear. These are important symbols. This is the sword of one of the leaders.
And here they have a collection showing how they take the cups from the wood. Special ceremonial arrow holders. And this one is a nice way to preserve examples of many clothes. So each one is a different pattern. It's a good way to preserve and display. The fire tools. Bearskin for putting the tools for making fire. Mm. Lots of wood carving. And also musical instruments. So they take about one third of a bark from large trees and then they put a marker to say they've taken so that they leave it for it to be recovered till the next time. Cage for the beer, food storage, Bridge. storage space, a poo, a storehouse, and this one is for the beer, the holy animal. Paper set. They have some crafts going on in the small huts. And some examples of the blessings that are made to do a lot of ceremonies before taking things from nature. Spirits in the water, spirits in fire, spirits in the mountain. We'll fill up with more water and then the weight will balance. <sighs> this is a display of the process of taking the park in the string. この作り方、完成するまでどれくらいかかるんですか。もうこれオリジナルでえっと、6月に一応作ってから始まると折るまで1年かかるんですか。うん、1つ作る。これこれこれだけでね。で、あの、刺繍してたら1年半から2年かか
Thank you. Itself. Thank you. Another crow is here. No bears today. This is from a parliamentarian, Kayano Shigaru. His museum is next door. Combination ticket can be gathered. If there was a meeting room here, two giant birds. Remember the lake and the water is central for them in the valley. Bear and the animals. These are bear skins. Carvings of bears. Knives. This is a PhD thesis of a gentleman. And here we have many clothes that are preserved. Shoes for the snow. Jewelry. Great number of ornaments. It's a sharks. paintings. The valley is not far. The bottom of Upali is in the ocean. It goes up in the mountains and the hill. The salmon spawn up the river. So that provides a great source of food for people here. Many photographs their life and activity. Mm. Maritime culture is critical. Their resources from nature. And living. This is his study. Gentleman. So he's a scholar and a parliamentarian. Kayano Shikaru. He's gathered a great number of ornaments together and paintings. Cool. 
also visa collections from Australia and Europe. She tried to travel and share. On the grounds, some huts, and that's a guest house. We'll be staying. We also have a woodworking shed. Many tools, axes, and saws assembled. So what is clearly a critical component for most of the tools that are made. For planting the ground. So that's the main building of the museum. And this is woodworking tool. Crows still exist here. The man is taking ceremonial sticks to plant for blessings. So this is the Saru River. This is where the culture has been surviving next to. There's a dam, further down there is the coast, about 20 miles. See the salmon used to come up the river. Many trees. Saru River. Water sometimes will be higher down. Maybe the mountain rains from the snow. It's a lot of wild growth on top of a concrete structure. Across the steps, plants have grown. It's totally weeded. This is a museum, Sarah River Culture. Woodlands and European forests play a major role both for people who live in the region and promotion of Ainu culture. Ainu handiworks, Ainu food culture. Okay. So recently by starting to plant um, more of the crops. The designs made this wood is really strong. So that's when the lake is uh, fully full. That is a nicely coordinated vending machine. You see the construction the locked wooden areas floor the roof
like all indigenous people, are very spiritual. Blessings and shavings are made from peeling back the bark of the trees. We must offer nature for everything. The bark is peeled back. The layers. The ornaments are made in this way. The Marcus. Boats have a very flat bottom. This is one of the water puddles, carefully balanced. The water is taken its toll the time, but from the water it beats and pounds the rice. So you can see the pounding when it falls. Some of the traditional plants are grown in the garden here. For medicine, for food, for health. Some are introduced species. Like all indigenous cultures living today, must also embrace modernity. The vending machines under the cover somehow become indigenous. Wires of electricity. Even though mushrooms way may live. So let's go and explore the lakeside. The owl and the salmon. Nicely carved, but interesting fusion. Water, something which we all need, all creatures live on water. In this introduction, let's talk about the Sustainable Development Goal 6, on providing safe water and abundant water to everyone on the planet. The water flows, cleansing itself, Whether we're not people, it's usually sufficient natural means to cleanse it and make it available again for us. Walking in the rain, the rain provides new fresh water cleansed for us. 
Let's explore as we go over some of the principles and the goals and indicators to try to provide water for everyone on the planet. This is a site next to the dam, next to the river for archaeological development and excavation. The quadrants were established in 1990, 1992. They found various evidences. So if we go back 20,000 years BC, you can see gradually the development of the culture through this site and the excavation of this area I've found evidence of human occupation so now it is signs of the dam, the lake. We see a lot of damage to the water over time. One of the most significant ways that it, water is cleaned is through air. So from this small creek the large part designed in this flow to come out into the lake. Even if man attempts to control nature, it may not last for so long. It doesn't mean that we don't have a role in sustainable development. In fact, we have a great role. But we need to put things in the perspective. Although we can try to construct things of stone and concrete, it is the uh, plants, the sand, the microorganisms, that will cleanse water. The reeds, so here is the essence. How can we create wetlands? How can we leave the wetlands that we have in place? recognizing their valuable contribution so here we have the construction and reclamation of a wetland but in fact the process that has been used to make a dam to control the water also has controlled some aspects of the natural essence of biological diversity. But this is not a lake. You can see it's a wetland. And as the dam was filled with silt, more and more plants can grow. So we do certainly have a role, not only in limiting our pollution, but in letting nature recover, and that's evidenced here. Hokkaido 
is a land considered of farms. The horses enjoying something to eat. The morning rain. This is a summer day, August 20th, 2019. For a few months of a year, this is covered in snow. So they must also be able to live inside for a few months of a year. Plenty of water. Water sanitation systems involve drainage, piping, you can see here even the concrete path. Construction next to this lake. So the animal effluent is also a significant source of potential microbial pollution that needs to be covered. In this case horses, but often it's cows, and they can produce a lot of waste. By the side of Nibutani Lake, there's also a memorial to Dr. Munro. Lived 1863 to 1942. It's in the Batani, on the side of a lake. It was sort of a nice area for picnics and for recreation. Some conifers as well as deciduous trees. This is the house of Dr. Munro, who is a researcher who did a lot of work towards the development of understanding of Ainu culture in this area. They're doing renovation work on the house. Let's leave a type of soil. a large forested area. This area of Hokkaido has a high population of Ainu people. Who are here? It's we we're going to be visiting the Nubutani Ainu Culture Museum and its graduate research center. That is the surrounding area of this house. So, uh, he is a pioneer to the study of uh, Ainu belief and cultures. He has written uh, the title. Uh, he lived in Nibutani Kotan as a medical doctor and uh, uh, during contribution uh, to helping the people 
in this uh, community. He is uh, from England near Goldman Mando with uh, Chio Mando, uh, his wife, living together forever. Uh, they died here on the hill. Mm. So it was celebrated Showa 50s. 1975 There of course are larger rivers In the summer, not so much water is flowing down here But it provides the capacity with these sides for floods from the mountains from the winter snows Providing opportunities for the water to flow crossing into the bridge to the lake, the Patani Lake, the dam which controls the level. When they uh, put the sluice gates up on the other side, it will keep the level higher. But clearly they want to use the water in the summer to keep the irrigation systems running well. So this water control project involves management of the water to provide water in a sustainable manner for agriculture and other uses downstream. and then it functions as a wetland. One of the features of having a long winter is the need to keep dry firewood. You can see here one of the houses before in the garden. relative emptiness As you come to Nibitani it's also a major road a lot of freight, bridges, cars So what was wild nature is now developed in different ways electricity, lights, transportation the river flowing from the mountain the forests bringing nutrients and water from the top. Supporting the forest, supporting people. This is Saru River Valley towards the ocean. The river banks are high. Agricultural farming.
very cold in the winter. Fishing is a major occupation in Hokkaido. Fishing port. entrance. So this town 